Why are you guys talking about how attractive the characters are, man? Because I'm picking Sylvanas. I'm definitely picking Magistrate. No question. Here, I'm going to go with a shifting shade. You know, he skips leg day, but man, those forearms. All right, folks, let's talk about the cards that have been murdered by the Maw and Disorder mini set. In other words, when comparing cards of old to the cards recently released in the new mini set, they have in one way or another been eclipsed. They have been overshadowed. They have been uh, changed in a way that makes the new ones feel new or more interesting or sometimes strictly better, but in one way or another have been murdered. So yes, uh, a perfect comparison here to kick things off are these right here behind me. Sylvanas the Accused, of course, a new card of the mini set, compared to the Black Knight. And Sylvanas does everything the Black Knight does, but she does a lot more. She has uh, better stats, of course, with the five attack. She destroys any minion, not just minions with taunt. Enemy minions still, but you know, not restricted to taunt minions. And if you manage to infuse her for seven, she's also a mind control instead of just a destroy effect. And the crazy thing is the Black Knight actually used to be a pretty good card back in the day. You could play this in the control decks, things like Ramp Druid would run it. It would take big swings. People would play those giant Ancient of Wars in a Druid and the Black Knight would kill the opponent's 510. And that was such an enormous swing potential. And here we are, you know, eight years later. And of course, over the course of eight years, design had to evolve. The Black Knight has not kept up with the modern era of Hearthstone. And now we have Sylvanas, who's a good card. Is this unhealthy power creep? I don't think it feels problematic or scary to me. I think it is power creep because the Black Knight was good. It was playable. And now this is, you know, much, much better. But I don't think it's bad, necessarily. This feels like a pretty natural evolution. Sylvanas is a good card, but does not feel out of bounds in, in modern Hearthstone for me. I think uh, this is one of the more obvious and ex distinct examples we're going to have in this video, but perhaps not a bad one. All right, this was another really cool one, I thought. I, I kind of forgot Ginzo the Shark was a real card. And he's a weird Hearthstone card because he's holding Hearthstone cards. So the, 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 the lore of Hearthstone is that it's this card game that, you know, the innkeeper plays in the inn and people play these cards in the Warcraft universe. And it's based on tall tales and stories and lore within that universe. But even within the universe, within the universe, apparently they are aware of and play Hearthstone inside of the Hearthstone universe. So we've got this like inception layer upon layer upon layer because Ginzo, a Hearthstone card, is playing Hearthstone cards. Absolutely mind-blowing. Ginzo plays with himself. <sighs> yes, indeed he might. <laughs> indeed he might. But uh, comparing these cards is pretty cool because Ginzo was a legendary neutral from, uh, what is that, Mean Streets of Gadgets, and he had to attack, and then if he managed to get his attack off, both players would draw until they had three cards. And nowadays, we have Sightless Magistrate in Demon Hunter. Uh, she doesn't have to attack. You just play her and you get five cards. So far more reliable because you don't have this, you know, survive check like you do with Ginzo. He doesn't even have Rush. Rush wasn't a thing back then. So, uh, you know, he had to both live on board and then attack and you only got three. Magistrate just gives you the five right away, which is obviously an, an enormous upgrade. And I'll, I don't remember Ginzo getting played much at all. I feel like this card was was pretty forgettable even in his era. And the crazy thing about Magistrate is this card's, I think, objectively, by most people's eyes, I guess that makes it subjective, but <laughs> subjectively so far, it seems like an insane card. Like when you play Magistrate, you go, oh my God, this is so busted but actually not getting that much play yet. Uh, there's not really the perfect deck yet. 3.7% uh, of all decks for Demon Hunter. She's in 32% of Demon Hunter decks. So really just the more aggro -y ones are running Magistrate. Uh, but pretty insane to think that, you know, a legendary card like this has been completely trounced on in regards to the strength of its effect. 
and still not actually good enough to like build the deck around or necessarily reshape the meta it's just a card with what we think is potential right now but not completely nuts so i thought this was a very very cool comparison to see all right moving on here we have the incriminating psychic versus the shifting shade this is a card from whispers of the old gods it was a four mana four three uh copied a card from your opponent's deck now, the Incriminating Psychic, new from On Disorder, it has Taunt, number one, bonus keyword, has more total stats, eight versus seven. It has a minion type in Dragon, and I think most importantly, which is often better, is that it will copy the card from your opponent's hand. So you get this reconnaissance advantage, because uh, you know what they have in hand right now, you know what they might be playing you know, next turn, you kind of have an idea of what's happening. Uh, but also sometimes we keep good cards in hand these days with things like Infuse or you know, mulliganing into your win conditions. So you're more likely, I think, to hit a really good target as opposed to a bad target, or especially a higher cost card, because lower cost cards are often played out of hand early in the game, leaving behind mid to high cost cards in the mid to late game when the incriminating psychic is, is most likely to come down. So it filters to a higher card quality on top of all of the other bonuses that it has still for four mana. So this is really the same feel of card, but modernized. It's got way more stuff going on, you know, but also I, I think it's aligned in a way that, that better suits priest being a defensively minded card. This higher health total plays well for priest with all their various buff and inner fire style shenanigans which may not be super relevant but still feels like the shape of priest and it's defensive with that taunt which is great for slower grindier priests so in all ways the incriminated psychic just feels like a better fit and higher utility card for priest which is is pretty cool to see i i don't remember shifting shade being a good card or a great thing back in the day i think psychic has a chance to be relevant in thief decks for priests so I think this is another really nice, healthy evolution. The Incriminating Psychic, for various reasons, just feels a lot better to play and I, I think is a more impactful card as well in a game state scenario. It's just going to fit so much better. All right. So next up here, we have Life Sentence for Mage. This is that new four mana removal spell. I have not seen this played yet that I can remember, but it just completely removes a minion from the game. It exiles it. It poofs it, if you will which is really the ultimate form of removal in Hearthstone because it, it uh, denies any sort of death rattle effects. It uh, is not in the graveyard for resurrection style effects. It just completely vanishes it from the game. Compared to the old removal style of, of Mage of Polymorph, that's often better. Not technically always, because sometimes putting a sheep in a resurrect pool could actually be better than putting nothing in a resurrect pool. Feel free to discuss. Uh, also, this does lack a tag, which Polymorph now has Arcane. Of course, it didn't back in the day when it was printed. It, you know, Arcane is a new thing. Uh, you can also compare this a bit to Assassinate for Rogue, which is now four mana for the record. I, I included the five mana version here as the original. Perhaps I should have included the original Polymorph without the spell school as well. But uh, again, just a better version. Now that's cross class, of course. It's not a value statement here. We're just comparing comparing the various types of single target removal that have existed in Hearthstone. Life Sentence is is you know I think in ninety nine percent of scenarios much better than both of these, which uh, is crazy because you know Polymorph was a good removal card. It's same thing for Hex. You know Hex was three mana for a while now, four mana. They've both been historically really solid transform removal cards, and Life Sentence straight up better than both of them in most hearthstone scenarios a vast majority of hearthstone scenarios so is life sentence gonna be good uh, not so sure i don't think it's gonna be great i think it's gonna be just okay it's kind of nuts that we have these staple these like staple removal cards from hearthstone i mean assassinate frankly he's never really gotten played much but it's it's very iconic and, and memorable at least and polymorph is very iconic and, and staple and Life Sentence, I think, just steps on both and still not particularly impressive. So next up, this is a pretty cool comparison. We've got Order in the Court versus Lore Keeper Polkelt. And uh, yeah, Order in the Court does exactly what Polkelt does with his battle cry, but it's only two mana and you kick it off by drawing a card right away. Insanely more efficient from mana standpoint, but also getting the card right away is a really big deal, I think, because Sometimes that means you can just use this to get and play whatever thing you want right away. If it's Cariel, 
you got 10 mana order in the court play the carry l job done right that's really really cool to help accelerate that game plan uh now obviously pull out a neutral card and, and order the courts a class card which is an important distinction and i think it's why it's possible that you can make a two mana pull kelt and it's not totally risky and totally crazy because of course when the card is a neutral card you have to balance it around every single class in the game which becomes really hard to do and in fact for pull kelt it didn't work they had to push him to five mana because he was like too good in hunter and they were fighting all their perfect early game aggro and then still hitting their late game bombs with pull kelt and that was gross so he went to five mana but when you narrow that effect into a single class what happens is you can make it more crazy you can you know dial it up to 11 essentially and have less concerns about it you know going out of control because you can print cards that you recognize okay we have to you know address the risk of ordering the court for a year and a half manage the class around order the court existing design around it it's much much easier than something like pull kelt so i thought this was a cool comparison because you get to see what happens when you do narrow the focus of a card just how much you can really uh crank it up from a power level standpoint because order the court is way more powerful than pull kelt just crazy more efficient card draw baked in that's nuts but it's possible because it's limited to Paladin specifically, and they can really uh, make that work. So really neat to see what happens when something becomes a class card. Even It's also, by the way, not a legendary, which is really noteworthy, because you're twice as likely to draw it, which is actually a really important distinction for a card like this one as well. Why are you guys talking about how attractive the characters are, man? <laughs> are we doing which characters are more attractive? Because I'm picking Sylvanas. I'm definitely picking Magistrate, no question. Here I'm gonna go with a shifting shade. You know, he skips leg day, but man, those forearms could do some work. Here we're gonna go with a sheep. Definitely got my eye on the sheep. Here I'm gonna go with Pull Kelt, that beard. You just can't, you know, beards, you can't, can't do better than a beard. Here we're gonna go with, um, yeah, the bearded guy. Yeah, those, uh, those big meaty hands. <laughs> absolute meaty hands that said let's let's talk more about weapons expert i don't think i got a good start on this one so the weapons expert new mini set card plus one plus one or draw weapons you got crazy weapon buff you got a uh, weapon tutor as well so some real nice flexibility there I love that design evolution from these older cards that really just kind of buffed your weapons and did so very inefficiently. Basically, both of those are five mana plays most of the time because those both had these fail states where these cards sucked if you didn't have a weapon. They just felt terrible. Like, oh, great, I'm going to tempo a green skin. Awesome. That feels just miserable right or i'm just playing this 3-3 oh god this is not exciting will i have a weapon next turn i don't know the weapons expert fixes that problem and that's why it's such a cool new design because you got a weapon boom you're good to go super efficient weapon buff you're off to the races pushing like crazy with your weapon if you don't have a weapon it's not a dead card and i love that that shores up the feel of this card so much because it removes those down moments makes it feel a lot lot better to play across the board through that flexibility so really cool that i think this card is both more like just powerful clearly doing the same sort of things far more efficiently than these old cards but also feels better to play that extra layer of flexibility that's the kind of design evolution i love spotlighting in videos like this where cards just feel better to play all right so next up uh this one's really cool because forest guide is a card i've spent a lot of time with a shocking amount of time spent with forest guide uh if you don't remember this card if you haven't seen it, it's in the witchwood it's a one six draws both players a card at end of turn we used to play this a lot in mill druid in wild format like every expansion i'll go back and play some mill druid because it was always really fun might be less fun now because due process showed up and i think mill druid is actually a viable deck these days <laughs> because due process took what we were trying to do with forest guide you know forcing our opponent to draw extra cards and it made it completely insane used to we had to spend four mana the forest guide had to stick on board it was so hard to work with now with due process you get the same effect for the rest of the game and you only spent two mana you're probably happy to play spells or nature spells anyway not a big downside there so losing the one six clearly not an important loss to the style of play you're going for so a thousand times better than what forest guide used to do 
for mill decks also just gives you a ton of reliable card draw in general on top of that you know you're often going to draw five cards 10 cards off due process or something whereas with forest guide you might get one extra maybe two if you're really, really lucky if you get one extra always but maybe two maybe three of the absolute stars align uh, also, yeah, due process has been bugged. Uh, whenever you play a hero card or whatever, you get an extra layer of due process. So that was pretty wacky, but I think that's been fixed, you guys are saying. Um, so may not actually end up being super good post bug fix. I guess maybe the jury is probably still out on that one. I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's a good, that's a cool insight, Sketchwick. Uh, it says, I don't know how I feel about permanent effects people can't get rid of, but maybe you can just ban in wild and it won't matter. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you there. I, I don't know that I necessarily like this design better, for the record. It's, it's far more powerful. It's far more efficient. But is it a better design? I think that's a really important question. I don't think so either. I think these rest of game effects in Hearthstone, we're getting more and more. It used to be really rare, and now they're just pumping them out a lot. I think they're pretty frustrating to play against sometimes because it feels like you have no way to turn the corner against them or, or overcome them or interrupt them or stop them. With a forest guide, you know, you just kill it. And yeah, forest guide was a really weak card, but that's a balanced question. If you made forest guide a three mana one six, you know, suddenly, okay, that's a card that still does something compelling, but it's still a little more powerful, more efficient. You can tweak those numbers. With these rest of game effects, it's a lot harder. Those just they persist forever and don't go away and that's frustrating can't answer that i can't kill the due process like i can kill the forest guide maybe not as interesting of a design again this this one might be a, a step backwards in a way so it has murdered it from a power level standpoint it needs to go to jail for it <laughs> it's it's gonna go to jail for the murder <laughs> uh. this one's so boring we already did landscaping in the regular set because plot of sin murdered landscaping you get five fives and druids now but but jury duty is another example of, of landscaping uh getting eclipsed a bit here when you're building these token decks it feels like you have all setup and no follow-up or sometimes it feels like you have all follow-up and no setup in other words you have a savage roar but you don't have a way to make minions or you have a bunch of ways to make minions but you don't have the savage roar to follow up cards like jury duty give you both in one and we saw the same thing with arbor up actually in druid as well that gave you both in one and that extra layer of flexibility often felt really nice in these decks because if you're behind on board you need to develop okay arbor up can get you some stats jury duty can get you some stats landscaping can get you some stats but if you need to follow up if you already have the board and you want to add that pressure, you want to add that extra damage, extra stats, landscaping doesn't do anything. It doesn't buff your tutus. Jury duty does, Arbor Up does. So I like that we're moving more and more towards these cards that have that dual utility for this style of deck to make sure you don't just completely whiff on a given hand or scenario. I, I, I There was one other I almost put in, but I forgot what it was. I think I cut it. Oh, like Call to the Stand versus Dirty Rat, for instance. But I, I, I thought Dirty Rat actually murdered Call to the Stand. <laughs> I think Dirty Rat is, is, I would almost go the other way. I would say Dirty Rat murdered Call to the Stand. Uh, Call to the Stand, the new, the new Warrior uh, Dirty Rat S card. But I, I think Dirty Rat is both more powerful and a cooler design, having the minion attached to the effect, right? The, the minion was really important to provide you a layer of defense if you pulled something crazy out of their hand and call to the stand doesn't have that baked in so yes warriors have answers to stuff but i liked with dirty rat the way it was baked into the card itself so that even if it backfired it kind of protected itself call to the stand not having that feels a little bit like a step backwards to be i i don't think call to the stand is a a more evolved design in any way i, I think it's kind of a backwards step but yeah, I think that wraps it up, guys. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I guess I'll, I'm, I'm gonna include that rant, I think. I'm gonna get my catharsis against YouTube. Uh, <laughs> include that rant. Maybe, maybe I'll put it at the end here since I'm on this screen anyway. You're comparing to TGT, which isn't really fair, not gonna lie. Isn't fair to who? We're gonna do this again. <laughs> I can't wait isn't fair to who what do you mean who's 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 it not fair to i don't think it hurt the cards feelings yeah Pina, i'm giving you a hard time but i i think this is such a silly argument i don't know if you're memeing or not i think you're memeing but 
th there is absolutely no reason we can't compare these cards there's no there's no fairness metric like like you don't have to be fair to hearthstone cards there's no there's nothing at stake there's no there's no downside to comparing them we're not insulting the orgrimmar aspirant he doesn't feel bad as a result because <laughs> there's no <laughs> I, i'm trying to think of a I'm trying to think of a concise way to compare this argument. Well, I, we do this every single expansion. I say, look, that's an old card. And look, that's a new card. And isn't it crazy how much better the new card is? And I have people who come in and say, well, it's not fair to compare the old cards to the new cards. They're old. But that's the point of the video. <laughs> that's what the, 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 that's the goal of the video. That's the whole point. That's what we're doing. We want to compare the old cards to the new cards and see how they've changed. Maybe it's unfair because that set in particular is so weak. It's like comparing an adult to a toddler. Even a bad adult seems OP against baby legs. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing. We're comparing adults to toddlers. But why is that unfair? That's what I don't understand. That is the goal of the video. We're saying, look at those old cards. They had such tiny baby legs. But look at this card. It's got big, strong hands. Look at its big, meaty forearms. That's the goal. I don't know why that's bad. <laughs> why is that not a fun thing to do? The whole point is to show evolution. I don't understand why so many people have problems with this. It, I'm going to actually include this in the video because I've kept a, a, a marginal dose of sanity throughout this discussion, unlike last time where I went completely insane. I went completely nuts last time. I, people act like there's some like um, noble, like like some noble judge in the sky that's like, well, only thou must only compare cards from today to cards of two years ago any older and thou shalt not be compared and it's like why why can't we compare the old cards and and, and people always say well you can't compare them because they're across classes again why not what do you mean we can't compare them because they're across classes who cares we're showing we're literally saying in certain scenarios certain classes certain designs it fits better in this class or it's different than this class the whole point is to contrast the cards we're not trying to uphold some noble metric of comparison whereby cards must only be justly and divinely compared against their peers that's not what we're doing we're just we're just having fun shooting the shit talking about how cards are different and have evolved over time it's 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 not some noble endeavor i hate that i hate that like we're trying to hold up some some beacon of truth comparing the cards i so anyway again none of you in chat are, are, are don't feel beholden to this rant it's none of your faults it's uh it's it, it you aren't to blame don't feel bad somebody out there peanut i think kicked it off you don't need to feel bad this isn't you I am taking out my frustrations on YouTube.